Okay, folks, first and foremost, I want to say uh, that my prayers go out to those uh, that have been hit by Hurricane Ian and those who may get hit by Hurricane Ian. This is a bad one by all accounts. And so uh, I just want to say that uh, we here at the Doc Bryant Show are praying for all of you. Uh, with that in mind, and Hurricane Ian uh, being an issue, uh, want to talk about the politics surrounding it. And uh, it's, uh, it's a horrible thing, folks, the way, that, uh, the way that our country has become. Uh, I recently talked about a video that I saw regarding the, uh, an analysis of a possible second American civil war. And part of the analysis was discussing the political rift that has happened in our country. And it pointed out how things were not this way back in the 50s. As a matter of fact, it, it pointed out that back in the 50s, the public was almost apolitical. Of course, the reason for that was because they had just defeated uh, fascism in World War II. They knew what was right and what was wrong. Everybody knew what was right and what was wrong morally. And they knew what was evil morally. They had morals to the point where there was not really any kind of political differences, major political differences, between Democrats and Republicans. And both Democrat and Republican lawmakers largely would campaign on the platforms of both parties because they were so similar. We had morals back then. And one party, now I'm not going to say one party anymore. There's one group that do not have morals, that being the American left. They are, they have become what we fought against in World War II. They have become the Nazis. They have become the fascists. The, the left of the world, the Nazis, have, have risen again. And our American left have joined them in their once again drive for global domination. Their godless philosophy. And I say their godless philosophy only because they don't believe in the real God. They believe in themselves as gods. They wish to supplant God. 
as the rulers, the unelected rulers of this world. And that's where we're at right now. Back in the 50s, we had morals. We knew what was right and wrong. And very shortly after the 50s, the 60s came along. And a generation without morals, a generation that was raised on the ease of the 50s, came up. And America began its slow decline into moral relativism, which continued on into amorality, that is, without morals, without God. And that's where we're at now. We are reaping the rewards of that. such that the American left, which is a contradiction in terms, quite frankly, they look forward to crisis. They look forward to catastrophe. And when true crisis and catastrophe do not exist, they seek to create it where they can, and where they can't, they manufacture fake crises, a la climate change. What was once global cooling in the 70s, became global warming in the late 80s, early 90s, throughout the 90s, and then morphed into climate change. The reason that they had to continue to rebrand is the same reason that the left continuously has to rebrand. It's because their ideas are bankrupt. And they are eventually found out that they are bankrupt, and so they continuously have to rebrand. Dan Rather, actually, uh, earlier tonight, I'm sorry, this, this is this morning, I guess. This is the 30th of September. On the 29th of September, the evening of 29th of September, Dan Rather, the uh, useless hack, posted on Twitter that it's time to talk about the climate crisis. And eh. We've been talking about a climate crisis, or rather the American left have been talking about a climate crisis for the past half century. Again, with global cooling first in the 70s, and then where it was proven that there was no evidence for global cooling, they changed it to global warming. And then when there was scientific evidence that there was no such thing as global warming. They had to change it to climate change, and now they are blaming climate change for everything. If the winters are too cold, it's because of climate change. If the summers are too hot, it's because of climate change. If the environment for a particular area is too arid, it's because of climate change. If it is too wet, it's because of climate change. If there are too many hurricanes, it's because of climate change. If there are not enough hurricanes, it's because of climate change. Everything is climate change. 
And let me give you the background of what this really is, folks. See, these leftists are constantly talking about quote-unquote science. What they refer to as science, when they say science, there should be quotation marks after it. There should be a TM after it for trademark. Because what they refer to as science is not actual science. It is not the real definition of science. It is scien uh, scientism, scientology, and by scientology I'm not actually talking about the cult Scientology, although that's a, a different discussion. When they talk about climate change, the environment, and all that kind of stuff, this is no different. I say again, this is no different. One more time, this is no different than... earth worship than environmental worship. The earth worship and environmental worship that has been going on from time immemorial. From the time I mean, you go back to any culture in history, any ancient culture in history, they worshipped the earth, they worshipped the environment, they had gods for everything. And this is no different. That's what this is, that's what environmentalism is. It's just another name for the same game. I said I was going to talk about the politics of this, and I'm actually talking about the spirituality of this. But that's what we're looking at. These people have created a god that they refer to as climate change. And that god that they refer to as climate change requires sacrifices. And those sacrifices come in the form of monetary sacrifices, taxes. But that's not the only sacrifice that the left demands. Nor was it the only sacrifice that the ancients demanded. The left demand human sacrifices as well. Just like the church has its, the Christian church, I should say, just like the Christian church has its sacraments, the cult of the left has their sacrifices, their sacraments as well. Their sacraments are of a satanic nature. For if you do not worship the true God, then you worship Satan. As Christ put it, if you are not with Christ, then you are against him. And now I'm going to bring another issue into all of this. But just as we have our sacrament of communion, Holy Communion, they have their sacrament of abortion. That's the real reason they want abortion, folks. 
they don't care about women's rights because the fact is it is insane to suggest that anybody has a right to murder anybody else. That is insanity to suggest such a thing. And it is scientifically real science, by the way, scientifically provable that abortion is murder. But here's the question. Here's the question you should always ask when the left proposes something, anything, any policy. Who does it really benefit? The left do not care about illegal immigrants. They have proven that. As a matter of fact, the, the, uh, Ron DeSantis proved that when he sent those illegals, just 50 illegals, to Martha's Vineyard, and Martha's Vineyard exploded and had them deported by the National Guard within hours of their arrival. Martha's Vineyard that is populated by multi-millionaires with homes that have multiple bedrooms and bathrooms. They don't care. They proved they do not care about illegal immigrants. They do not care about the black community. What has the American left done for the black community in the United States? The black community in the United States has been largely voting left a significant portion of them since the 1930s and or they started in the 1930s but a significant portion of them since the 1960s since the LBJ administration that was the great switch when LBJ signed the great society into law he said we will have those n words voting for us for the next hundred years and they largely have been. And they stayed in poverty that entire time. That was the intent. So they don't care about the black community. They do not care about, quote unquote, the children. They cannot care about the children and at the same time demand that unborn children be murdered. And, and now they are even demanding that children hours after birth be murdered in the name of their blood sacrament. So you have to ask if they don't if if the reasons that they give for their policies are not the actual reasons for their policies then what are the reasons for their policies what are the real reasons for their policies and again I I have said this over and over that one of the one of how shall I put this I believe, and it's not just that I believe, the fact of the matter is that the goings on on this earth are a shadow of what is going on in the real world, the real world being the spiritual world. There is a God, a creator God. There is a Satan. Satan rebelled against God. 
God condemned Satan to hell. So Satan did the only thing that he could do. He decided to take as many of God's creation as he could with him. And when I say God's creation, I'm talking about those that were created in the image of God, that being humans, for which God had an answer. He had a plan, that plan, that answer being Christ. That's what I believe, because that's the way it is. I have actually seen enough evidence to support those things. And those who follow Christ, those who really follow Christ... tend to behave in a manner consistent with his teachings. Those who do not follow Christ do not, largely, or are susceptible and those who actively oppose Christ those who actively oppose Christ tend to follow and behave as the one who actively opposes Christ. Every single policy decision of the left is based on the oppression and destruction of human life. Every single policy of the Democrat Party in the United States is based on, its goal is to weaken and destroy the United States as it was founded under the Constitution of the United States. And the United States was founded on Judeo-Christian ethics. It's a fact that cannot be denied. It cannot be at least rationally denied. So here we have an administration that usurped power in the United States. And they have made multiple decisions that have made the United States weaker. That have, to their very best ability, harmed the people of the United States and the world in general. And here we have a natural disaster that is killing people. And we have a less than lackluster response from the government of the United States A because they want the suffering never let a crisis go to waste is one of their mottos they want the suffering Because in their minds, 
the suffering drive people to them. We will give up our liberties and our freedoms to the government if the government will provide for us and keep us safe. That is their goal. That is their aim. They do not care about the people. They care about power. They care about the liberties that the people have. They see us as a means to an end. They see us as potential slaves. Our liberties and independence threaten their power. So we must... The easiest way for them to take power is not to physically take it from us, not by having people go door to door with guns. It's much easier if we give it up ourselves to them. And that's the point of the suffering. And again, if they do not have a natural disaster, because those cannot be relied upon to happen on schedule, they will create crisis. They will create financial crisis with inflation. The only way inflation is created. The only way cre uh, inflation is created. The only way inflation is created is if the central bank produces too much money. It is not created any other way. So the federal government has complete and total control over inflation. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If they do, they are lying. The inflation is intentional. And they are looking very hard Worldwide, globally, the left is looking very hard and working very hard to create food shortage. They are starting to come to the realization that their previous policies of those who control the money, control the people, were not correct. They are coming to the realization or have come to the realization that those who control the food and utilities control the people. The energy crisis in Europe is not an accident. And they are really trying hard to create a food shortage. And understand, too, that if they are given control of the food supply, they themselves will never be short of food, but you will. Food will be rationed. if they are given control. I seem like I'm rambling, folks, but I'm not. This is all interconnected. This is all one big plan. And their response to the hurricane, or lackluster response to the hurricane, is merely one tiny little piece. Because they have noted something, politically speaking, they have noted that a governor, a Florida governor, 
who is perceived to have responded poorly to a hurricane has very little chance of re-election. And so the federal government plans on making the hurricane response as painful as possible. They did this in Puerto Rico several years back. I guess it was about 20 years back. Might not have been that much. But in Puerto Rico, they specifically, intentionally withheld fresh water and supplies from Puerto Rico to make the crisis as bad as it could possibly get. I believe that was under Obama. They want you to suffer. They do not care about you. And the ironic thing is, they will blame the suffering on their opponents so that you will run to them. Give them your vote. Give them your liberties. Give them your freedoms. That is the point. That is what they want. And like, like everything, our response to the left has to be a complete response. It can't just be a political response. It can't just be go out and vote, because going out and voting, while it does work, it works only temporarily. And I am now speaking only to the Christians out there. We need to constantly be praying. The reason that we are in the mess that we are in now is because the church became lazy. The church became lazy. The church stopped praying. The church got lazy because things got easy. So we need to pray not only for the people who are currently suffering because of this hurricane. We need to be in prayer for our government. And I'm not saying that we need to be in prayer that our government... becomes more prosperous. We don't want our government to become more prosperous. We need to pray that our government becomes a good, godly government. So we don't need to be praying necessarily that Biden and the Democrats that are currently in power get more power. Rather, we need to be praying that they get replaced by God-fearing people, by a God-fearing government that will follow the law and that actually care about the people. That actually want the people to be prosperous, or as it says in the Bible, so that we may worship God in peace. As if I needed an example of how the, just one example, 
of how the policies of the left are made intentionally to make people suffer. The draining of the federal oil reserves by the Biden administration. Well, now, now we need those reserves because of this hurricane. We need that stuff now. But it's not there. Not to the degree that it is needed. And so people will suffer. And with people suffering, the Luciferian left hope and pray to their gods that this will give them more power. That is their desire. Don't let them do it, folks. Do not fall for this. Instead, pray to God for guidance, for discernment, for wisdom, and pray to God for a good government so that we may live and worship him in peace. example, folks, of what I was talking about earlier, what I'm always talking about, really, how the policies of the left are designed, intentional, intentionally designed to harm and weaken the United States. The United States, to them, is an impediment. It is an impediment to a one-world government. It has been an impediment to a one-world government for over a century. You see, as long as there is one free nation in the world, they cannot achieve their dream of a one-world global government. The one world global government is their goal. And here we have more proof that the Democrats want to destroy the United States. 
House Democrats block a crackdown on fentanyl as over 100,000 Americans die every year from overdoses and poisonings. This is a Breitbart article by John Binder, dateline 29 September 2022. Even as more than 100,000 Americans are dying from drug overdoses and poisonings every year, many linked to fentanyl, House Democrats have blocked a plan. I say again, House Democrats have blocked a plan that would crack down on the deadly substance flowing almost exclusively from the United States-Mexico border into American communities. This week, 220 House Democrats, I say again, 220 House Democrats blocked consideration for Representative Michelle Fishback's HALT, All Lethal Trafficking of Fentanyl Act, to permanently classify fentanyl-related substances as Schedule I of the Controlled Substances Act. Such a change would make it permanently illegal to sell fentanyl-related substances. In April, House Democrats blocked consideration of similar legislation. I say again, House Democrats blocked consideration of similar legislation that would have cracked down on fentanyl-related substances. Consistent blockage of bills to combat fentanyl overdoses and poisoning comes as the CDC officials have warned parents to carry naloxone in case their child is overdosing on fentanyl. Let that sink in. They want parents to carry Narcan in case their child is overdosing on fentanyl. Instead of making it illegal, instead of combating it, instead of putting a heavy criminal sentence they want parents to carry Narcan and ladies and gentlemen guess who controls the supply of Narcan it's not something that you can just buy off the shelf the government controls Narcan and whether or not you can get it. So who's really in control of whether or not your child dies of an overdose of fentanyl? It's actually a bit of a loaded question. The answer, of course, is you are. But this shows where the hearts of the Democrats, such as they are, are located. The hearts of the Democrats are located in such a place as to give them more power. And why do you think, what what are possible reasons that the Democrats would be opposed to harsher penalties on fentanyl distribution. And don't get me wrong, as a nurse, I know, especially as a surgical nurse, I know that there are legitimate medical uses for fentanyl. But I also know that fentanyl is an extraordinarily dangerous, powerful drug and must be handled with care. And it's killing hundreds of thousands of people. But the fact of the matter is, 
and I'm going to go spiritual here again. So if you're not a Christian, you can go ahead and tune out. The real cause of this epidemic, and this is a legitimate real epidemic, the real cause of this is spiritual. Why are people using fentanyl illegally in the first place? Why are they using drugs in the first place? Heroin, methamphetamine, cocaine, crack. Why are people using all of these substances, these intoxicants? They're using them because they are in pain. They are using them to escape emotional and spiritual pain. When spiritually separated from God, We seek to find comfort, security, even imagined, and pleasure from other, albeit temporary, means. The only source of true security, the only source of true happiness, is God. We were created to be with God. And when we are not with God, when we are separated from God, and all of the wickedness that is in the world assails us, we seek to find solace elsewhere. Artificial solace. And that's where the drugs come in. That's where the alcohol comes in. That's where the sex comes in. The pornography. All of these are forms of escape from a fundamentally wicked world. And the irony is that engaging in those things simply makes the world more wicked. As those are products designed to get you addicted to the very wickedness that you are trying to escape. And of course, there are those of you out there who are not Christian, who still stuck around despite the fact that I told you, you don't have to. And you're saying, but, but Doc, if there was a God who who was really loving, if he actually existed, there wouldn't be wickedness in the world. Everything would be good and wonderful. 
and pure and happy. There'd be rainbows and lollipops everywhere. So that's proof that there is no God. To which I answer, you're wrong. God did create a perfect place for us. And we threw it away. We are the authors of the wickedness in the world, not God. I say again, God created a perfect place for us, and we turned him down. But, but, well, then... You know, why didn't God make us uh, so that, you know, we wouldn't be able to turn him down? Because you cannot have love without free will. We see this all the time, every day. Cops on the beat see it multiple times a day in domestic abuse situations where one partner tries to force another partner to love them. A gift demanded is no gift at all. If God had created us robots to worship him, that would not be love. It would not be true love. It would not be true worship. In order for God to have a true loving relationship with any person, It must be that person's choice. And we can see, again, the opposite of this at work all the time in the world. Because Satan demands worship. Satan wants mindless robots who do not think, who take his word unquestioningly, who will worship him because he demands it. And he will get that worship any way he can. He is the Baskin Robbins of sin. And one of the flavors that he offers is fentanyl. Any intoxicant. There are some people who would never think of touching heroin but have absolutely no problem drinking a 12-pack every day. See, it doesn't matter to Satan how he separates you from God. As long as you're separated from God. And as long as you aren't worshiping God, ladies and gentlemen, you're worshiping Satan. You say that's extreme, but that is the case. The only real big difference between the two is that one of them has offered you a choice. One of them actually loves you and cares about you. 
and the other one is trying to separate you from that love and trying to kill you as quickly as possible to separate you from that love eternally. That's forever, folks. See, when Satan rebelled from God, God cut him off. Hell was created for the angels that rebelled against God. It wasn't created for humans. It wasn't intended for humans. At least I don't think so. And Satan didn't think that was fair. But he had a choice too. And he took it. And he's running with it. God created a perfect place for us, and we rebelled against him. Granted, it was through deception. But we still made the choice. Now, the good news in all of this, and that's why it's called the gospel, that's why it's called good news. The good news is that every single second of every single day, we have the opportunity to change our minds. We have the opportunity to turn back to God and to have a relationship with God. God does not demand anything of us. He's God. What could we possibly offer him? The only thing that we can offer him that he wants is a relationship with us as individuals. He created us individually, each one special. Again, if he had wanted to create a bunch of robots, he would have created a bunch of robots, but he didn't. He created a bunch of amazing, diverse. I know how so many people balk at that particular term. But in this case, it is legitimately used. Amazing, diverse, individual people with our own personalities, our own individuality. And he wants a personal relationship with each and every one of us. He does not demand anything of us. The thing that so many that turn off so many people is 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 not even part of Christianity really. The demand that the, the concept that that Christians that God demands that Christians behave certain ways doesn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen, that is called legalism. That is called legalism, and that is not a part of Christianity. I don't care if you've got a PhD in theology, and you, you because there are people out there who have PhDs in theology, or THDs as they are actually referred to. 
or were at one time, that say that when you become a Christian, you have to behave in a certain way. That's not true. That is a lie. That is a lie to turn people off of Christianity. The fact is that when you become a Christian, when you have a personal relationship with God, your behavior will change as a matter of course. Because you will not have need of all of these other things. You will not have need of intoxicants like fentanyl, like alcohol, because you will have God. I think it was Blaise Pascal I think it was Blaise Pascal who came up with the concept of the God-shaped hole. Blaise Pascal was a mathematician. And even though he did not use the term God-shaped hole, what he said in language much more eloquent than is currently used in our society, we were designed to have a relationship with God, but we were separated from God, and that left a God-shaped hole in our being. We were designed to have a relationship with God. We are broken without that relationship. God is eternal. So we have a gaping eternal wound. And we try to fill that gaping eternal wound with all kinds of stuff. We try to fill it with money. We try to fill it with power. We try to fill it with drugs. We try to fill it with alcohol. We try to fill it with sex. But because it is an eternal wound, an eternal sized wound, and all of those things are not eternal. They will never fill it. Those things will never fill the God-shaped hole. Matter of fact, let me read you Blaise Pascal's statement about this God-shaped hole. This is brilliant. And I quote, The sovereign good. Man without faith can know neither true good nor justice. All men seek happiness. There are no exceptions, however different the means they may employ, they all strive towards this goal. The reason why some go to war and some do not is the same desire in both, but interpreted in two different ways. The will never takes the least step except to that end. 
This is the motive of every act of every man, including those who go and hang themselves. Yet for very many years no one without faith has ever reached the goal at which everyone is continually aiming. All men complain. Princes, subjects, nobles, commoners, old, young, strong, weak, learned, ignorant, healthy, sick, in every country, at every time, of all ages and all conditions. A test which has gone on so long without pause or change really ought to convince us that we are incapable of attaining the good by our own efforts. But example teaches us very little. No two examples are so exactly alike that there is not some subtle difference. And that is what makes us expect that our expectations will not be disappointed this time as they were last time. So while the present never satisfies us, experience deceives us and leads us on from one misfortune to another until death comes as the ultimate and eternal climax. What else does this craving and this helplessness proclaim but that there was once in man a true happiness, of which all that now remains is the empty print and trace? This he tries in vain to fill with everything around him, seeking in things that are not there the help he cannot find in those that are. Though none can help, since this infinite abyss can be filled only with an infinite and immutable object, in other words, by God himself. God alone is man's true good. And since man abandoned him, it is a strange fact that nothing in nature has been found to take his place. Stars, sky, earth, elements, plants, cabbages, leeks, animals, insects, calves, serpents, fever, plague, war, famine, vice, adultery, incest. Since losing his true good, man is capable of seeing it in anything, even his own destruction, although it is so contrary at once to God, to reason, and to nature. Some seek their good in authority, some in intellectual inquiry, and knowledge, some in pleasure. Others again, who have indeed come closer to it, have found it impossible that this universal good desired by all men should lie in any of the particular objects which can only be possessed by one individual and which, once shared, cause their possessor more grief over the part they lack than satisfaction over the part they enjoy as their own. This desire is natural to man, since all men inevitably feel it, and man cannot be without it. The reason that the Democrats the reason that the left can gain and maintain the power and control that they have is because They have power and control over those things that people use to fill their God-shaped hole.
there are some of you out there who look to the Democrats, who look to government to keep you safe, to provide for you, to, dare I say, make you happy. And they use that as a means to control you. Look at what they've done to the black community in the United States. Look at what they've done to every community they touch. Go to San Francisco now. Go to Los Angeles now. Go to Portland now. Go to Seattle now. Hell, it's even starting to happen in Dallas, in Houston, in Austin. Cities that are run by these leftists. have turned into living hells. Homeless people engaging in and addicted to intoxicants, roaming the streets, controlling the streets, criminals, murderers, rapists, thieves, acting at will. The streets are not safe. And these Democrats, these leftists, talk about releasing more criminals onto the streets in those places that they control. This is the type of life they promise, or rather they provide, they promise something quite the opposite. They promise an egalitarian utopia that they cannot provide, that they have no intention of providing. These are the children of Satan. And if left to their own devices, the societies that they create cannot last. Look at the Chaz, the independent Chaz that ran out of food and became run by a warlord within a matter of days. Again, look at these Democrat-controlled cities that have become absolute hellholes. And then I want you to take a look at what the world becomes as described in the book of Revelation. After the church is removed from the world, the restraining force is removed from the world and the left has exactly what it wants. A world with no God, a world with no church, and they can do everything that they want to do. And they're great They finally get their globalist society. They finally get their one world government where they are in charge. And it collapses within seven years. Such that Christ himself has to come back and put an end to a great world war that the Bible says if it had not been stopped would have destroyed 
the entire world. That's what the left offers. That's what trying to fill the God-shaped hole offers. That is the ultimate culmination of godlessness. But like I said, for the individual, see, Satan doesn't want individuals. He wants zombies. He wants people who will follow him and worship him as he demands. God does not demand anything of you. God wants nothing of you except a relationship with you. That's it. Because you can't give him anything that he can't give himself. He's God. The only thing that you can give him is your love. That's it. And that's all he wants. But it's your choice. It's your decision. Satan doesn't want that. He demands your worship. You will give it to him without thought, without question. Again, look at L.A., look at San Francisco, look at these Democrat-run cities with their homeless, homelessness, with their drug use, their needles and their feces in the streets, their rampant crime. That's what Satan offers. That's what you're going to get. And that will ultimately lead to the end of the world. But you as an individual have a choice every second of every day. You can turn it around. That's what the word repent means. The word repent just means to change direction change your thought process and you can do that and you can have a relationship with a loving god who cares about you who created you special and all he wants is a relationship with you he does not demand anything else of you he doesn't demand anything of you. He just wants a loving relationship with you. Like a father wants a relationship with his children. That is the relationship he wants with you. He doesn't want you to be perfect because you cannot be perfect. He just wants to be your father, your daddy. The Bible even says, call on him as Abba, Father. Abba is the Hebrew word for Daddy. Not, O oh Lord, Father, O oh, we, Thou, this, Thou, that, and the other thing, Thou, if. No. That's legalism. That's not what he wants. He even specifically states that in the Bible. He just wants a personal, loving relationship with you, and I promise you, unlike Satan and Satan's promises, I promise you, if you have that relationship with him, you won't have need of any of that other stuff. It's not that he demands that you quit sinning and this, that, and the other thing. No. That's going to happen. As a matter of course, you won't need to, you won't want to anymore. And it's not going to happen overnight. But as your relationship with him grows, you're not going to need that stuff anymore. 
It's all going to fall away. The closer you get to him, the further away from that junk you're going to get. All of that stuff that you think makes you happy but actually ends up making you miserable will slowly fade away. Then you won't need the fentanyl. And then you will not be dependent on politicians for your happiness. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that is what the Democrats, what the left truly fear. They truly fear that you will not need them anymore. Because if you are no longer dependent on them, they no longer have any power over you. It all comes back to the spiritual realm, folks, and the spiritual realm in the spiritual realm is the remedy for all of the suffering here on earth. The solution is a lot easier than people make it out to be.